time when he left. <laughs> so y'all would have been investigating. Now, where more? He had his Gatorade with him when he left. <laughs> and, uh, he, he, he had the staff and he had on his, his, uh, his air clouds and he was, he, was, he was ready. What happened, Lord? What you done did with our leader? Joshua knew better. God said, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now get up and lead these people. He didn't freak out. He got up. He said, okay. Why? God and Moses been preparing me for this. That's why I was going up. I was being prepared. Because I knew this day would come. And I didn't want the day to come and I not be prepared for it. But God say, before you start leading them anywhere, get in that word. Yes. Meditate in it day and night. Amen. Don't let it come out of your mouth till it's in your heart. Amen. Then you're going to prosper and have good success. Yes. You're going to make your own way prosperous and have success because you didn't just read the word. You meditated. You muttered it. Yes. It's in your heart now. Now you can walk it out. Yes. And Joshua took the people. See, we're talking about from serving to greatness. Moses was sent to get the people out. Moses was the deliverer. He brought them out of bondage. But because he let the people vex him and he hit the rock, he got disqualified from going into the promise. But Joshua was the leader that took them into the promise of God. But not only that, under Joshua leadership, they conquered all these nations and got all this stuff. It's called the Canaan Conquest, where they conquered on their way to the promise. They conquered everything. And nations was afraid of them because they say their God fights for them. We show up in the church shouting and stuff, but ain't nobody fighting for us. The Bible says that they say, nope, we, we, we just going to turn over this booty, this, this valuables, this stuff, because they God fight for them. We don't want to fight against their God. The church got everybody coming after us. The politicians, the devil, COVID, everybody coming after the church because the church has not entered into that place of intimacy with God where God really fights for the church. Now, he fights for some churches, but he ain't fighting for every church because every church that show up don't represent him. So now Joshua is the leader and he is taking them over across the Jordan, but the water is so, is so high they can't cross over. But the Bible says when the priests that was carrying the glory of God, when their feet hit the water, the water began to back up downstream. The anointing and the glory were clear paths where it seems impassable and impossible. And Joshua takes them over to Jericho and God gives them specific instruction. And when they obey the word of the Lord, the walls come down. The first uh, conquest is Jericho. Why? Because he is the one that takes you in. See, Moses took them out. Moses was anointed for where they were, but he was not anointed for where they were going. Some people are anointed to bring you out, but they're not anointed to take you in. Joshua been serving. Now it's his season to lead the people. And he did not fail and he did not lose God. The saddest verse in the Bible, one of the saddest verses in the Bible, says after the death of Joshua, there arose a people that did not know God. One generation away from knowing God. Now we may say that was a travesty. That's where we are now. That's, why, that's where we are now. We are one generation away yes. Yes. from not knowing God. Yes. After we're gone, I don't know what's going to happen. I see it even in mega churches where the, the father trying to turn it over to the son and the son coming in there changing everything doesn't even look like God anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Something you spent your life to build, your child can destroy in a month. Say there arose a generation after the death of Joshua that did not know God, meaning that they had all this stuff. They were driving Bentleys. They were driving Mercedes. They were living in 10,000 square foot houses. They had it going on. They were wearing all this nice designer stuff, but they had no relationship. 
they had it going on because they, 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 they spoiled these nations. We look at the church today, the, the parallel is that the church people more prosperous than they ever been. Yeah. People living better than they ever lived, yeah. driving better than they've ever driven. Yeah. And look where we are. We don't have intimacy. We've gotten the stuff, but we've lost God. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the stuff, but you can't lose the one that gave it to you. God wants you to prosper. People are attracted to greatness. But what you going to say when they come? Yeah, my six-figure job, and I just, I'm bowling. Or you going to say, let me tell you when I was homeless. Oh, y'all ain't going to. Let me tell you when I couldn't eat no steak. I ain't have nothing in the refrigerator but a jar of water. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't going to talk to me. <laughs> Yes, I can eat lobster and crab now, but I remember when we was eating pork and beans and weenies. Let me tell you about God, the greatness of our God. What you see is a result of the goodness and the faithfulness of God. I remember when we couldn't get a building and we breaking down and setting up and got to get there early and set up and by the time service started, you're tired. And then when we did get a space, it was so small. But we was faithful because we know we serve a faithful God. So I remember when I didn't even have an office to study in. Now God has blessed us. Not only with the building, but paid it off. And you think I'm going to get crazy and forget what our God has done? They talking about this around the nation. Pastors in other states. Man, y'all are encouragement to me. We know if he did it for y'all, he'll do it for us. Let me tell you where we come from, though. Let, Let me tell you the story you don't see. It's a pastor in town preaching in Charlotte this weekend, and he had inboxed me. He said, I didn't know you were here, man. I would have hooked up with you. He said, I, mean, I want to come and see that great platform y'all had built for myself. I said, well, it'll be other times. He's like, I just want to see it. I'm upset. <laughs> I said, that's all right. You'll see it. Amen. Amen. People Amen. taking note of where we are, yes, but they don't know where we've been. They don't know the story. God has been faithful. God has been faithful. This is the key right here. God doesn't mind you having it. As long as you stay grateful. As long as you don't start worshiping it. As long as you give him the glory. See, one of my concerns is that we live in an ungrateful generation. God can do everything you ask him for and you still don't move you. I'm concerned about that. God did it and you still like he owed you something. 
Can I be honest with you? And I'm going to finish this. Listen, God doesn't owe us anything. When he gave us Jesus, he gave us his best. Anything we get after the cross is a bonus. So never develop this sense of entitlement like God got to do it. God has done it all. I'm grateful. I am grateful. Every time I ride past Montana, coming up 85, I say, Lord, I thank you. Every time I go back home past Montana, I say, Lord, I thank you. I remember. I'll never forget. I don't care what he does, where he takes us, I'll never forget. Because he's been faithful. Y'all sit down, taking up my time. Don't never develop that mindset. You want to block heaven over your life? Oh my God. Develop that, that, that the attitude where you don't have gratitude. And that, that entitlement. God, boy, you will have a brass ceiling over your head. Nothing getting through. Jehoshaphat, you don't need to fight. Send Judah first. Let me see if y'all can praise hard enough to confuse your enemies. Are you going to be sedated? Let me see, can you raise your level of praise? Church is going to want cute and praise and worship, and then we don't want to go the past 30 minutes. Man, you, you, <laughs> we, we haven't even tapped into it. We, we talking about living in the supernatural on Wednesday. You haven't even tapped into that realm, that dimension. What we do is cute. Could your praise go and confuse the enemy and make them turn on themselves? That's what Jehoshaphat, God said, you don't even need to send the soldiers out. Send Judah. Send the praisers and the worshipers and the musicians. And the Bible said that when the enemy heard it, they, they thought it was an army and they started killing each other because of praise. See, we, we y'all playing with me back there. Thank you. Visitor. Okay, praise the Lord. Visitor say, take my time. See, what, what has happened in today's church and, and I, I, man, I've been looking at my old church I grew up in. I was like, Lord, thank you for deliverance. Thank you. But we have become mechanical in our worship. We have become mechanical in our messages. We have become mechanical. So we think that the mechanics is going to do something. Baby, this is going to have to be a rim where you put your agenda aside and you follow the Holy Ghost. You're not going to get this accomplished. You're not going to go into this dimension of glory with mechanics. What's the formula, apostle? Ain't no formula. It's releasing yourself to God. Not religion to God. If the Lord say, y'all lay out before me all day, we done disqualify over 50% of the people because they have an agenda. You will never know God like that. Man, we done been in service where we couldn't get up. We just laid out for hours before the Lord. Glory was so heavy, you couldn't even get up. You try to get up and fall right back on your face. This cute stuff we got now, man, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if people really saved. You can't be saved and you don't desire God more than your next big thing. Your next event or your next this or your next... You, you can't love God. No desire for God. Holy Ghost, you, you determined to get me in trouble today. <laughs> so from serving the greatness, we see it with Joshua and Moses. Go to 2 Kings 3 and 11. I say they sang and in my old church, the people sitting down just looking. I'm like the, the choir up there singing as hard as they can. 
people just sitting there looking. I say, Lord, thank you for deliverance. Amen. Preacher hollering and talking about something. I say, Lord, what is he talking about? What is he screaming about? I don't know what the man talking about. Just hooping. That's how it was when I grew up. I was a little boy, man. I lay my head on my grandma's lap, and they preach up there hollering out. He scared me. I, I told her I don't want to go to church no more. She said, what's wrong, baby? I said, he's scaring me all that hollering. I'm laughing. I'm telling the truth. I don't like it. What? As a child, I'm like, do it. Take all of that. And I don't know what you're saying. It's hollering just to be hollering. We, we made that. We made that God. Especially in the African-American. We made that God. What is he? Is he having a Caesar? What is... Asthmatic. <laughs> and the people up waving stuff. That man about to have a, a asthma attack. I see why they only preach for 15 minutes, because you ain't going, you you can't carry that on. <laughs> you, you, you can't do that for no hour. You gonna be on. <laughs> All right, let's read. We got, I got seven minutes. Let, let me read. <laughs> Second Kings 3 and 11. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here who poured water on the hands of Elijah. He, it means he served Elijah. He served Elijah, right? Yes. I'm just going to read this for, 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 for fun. Verse 12, and Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Verse 13, then Elisha said to the king of Israel, what have I to do with you? He ain't care nothing for him. He said, go to the prophets of your fathers and the prophets of your mother. Y'all know who that was, right? Ahab and Jezebel. But the king of Israel said to him, no, for the Lord has called these three kings together uh, to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Verse 14. And Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely, I, if it were not for I regarded the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, king of praise, I, I would not even look at you nor see you. But now bring me a minstrel. Bring me a minstrel that can stir the atmosphere. Notice how they identified that Elisha had the word of the Lord because he served Elijah. And because he served Elijah, now that double portion is on his life and he can give us the word of the Lord to bring clarity and direction. He became great in the land because he served he served Elijah. He poured water on his hand. He kept his hands clean. Yes. And now when the nation is in trouble, they come to Elisha because now he carries that anointing. He is great because of his service. Wow. Yes. You don't have service, you will never be great. God does not promote lip service. Right. Right. He, pro he promotes servants. Amen. And this young man walked in double well, he had twice as much as what his leader had yeah. because he served this leader. Yeah. I don't have time to get into this, but what I always go back to, the Lord I always bring it back to my remembrance that when Elijah called Elisha, when he cast his mantle on him, he said that is an invitation that a person does not have to accept. Yeah. Your, your future depends on how you handle that invitation. Yeah. You don't have to accept it. God's not going to force you. God did not force Elisha to leave his mother and father. He did not force him to kill the oxen and, and burn up the plows and leave and go follow the senior prophet. He didn't force him, but the opportunity was there. God will always provide an opportunity for you to prove yourself. 
many people fail because, see, they don't realize it's God. It doesn't look like what they want. So they fail the opportunity to prove themselves because when God extends the invitation, it don't look like what we want to embrace. Why in the natural would a young man give up his family farm and business to follow this old prophet? To pour water on his hands. See, the invitation didn't look spectacular, but look at the end. The nations are coming because you carry something that was a manifestation of you serving. We don't want to serve. We want to show up great. Y'all remember the old shows, Superfly and Good Time and stuff, where the old, old men had them capes on and they show up, come in there with the cane pimping, and then they, they throw it off and the people catch it. They come in there looking important. That's how church do. We want to show up with the cape and pimping. And, and shake it off so somebody catch it so we look important. We don't show up to serve. When the invitation is extended, we don't, we don't receive it because it doesn't look, it's not packaged the way I thought it would be packaged. One more. How much time I got? Three minutes? Three minutes. I know I can go all day if I want to, but um, some people can't handle too much. So I'll try. Go, go to uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 19. People have not expanded their capacity for the word. They can sit up in the movie theater and go shopping all day, but they they haven't expanded their capacity. We only expand for what we're interested in. Philippians 2, 19. Are you there? Listen to Apostle Paul. He says, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. Verse 20. For I have no one like-minded, no one like-minded, no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. All these people around Paul, and he don't have nobody like-minded to care for the state of the people but Timothy. 21. For all seek their own, not the things which belong to Christ Jesus. Here we go. Here we go. Everybody seek their own thing, but not the things that belong to Christ Jesus. 22. But you know his proven character. Talking about Timothy. That as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Timothy worked with Paul in the gospel, serving him like a father. 23, therefore I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. He was like, I can't send nobody but Timothy. He the only one like-minded because he the only one served me. You don't get that mind or that mantle from a distance. You get it from serving. And so he could trust Timothy, amen? Ah, oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut off right here. I'm not done. I'm not done, but I've been teaching for over an hour. <laughs> I'm not done. It's kingdom investment time, amen? Now, now, let me clear something up. Let me clear something up because I, I am a prophet and I do hear stuff. Somebody say, well, you say we're going to follow the Holy Ghost, then why you won't just keep teaching? We following the Holy Ghost, but there are some people that checked out on me 30 minutes ago. So... Thank you for watching Transforming Lives. We hope that this message has been a blessing to you. Our mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrates the power of the word in every arena of life. Sowing a seed to our ministry will help to fulfill our mission. There are multiple ways to give to WLCI. You may text to WLCIG to 54244 or give through our website at www dot wordlifecenter.org or you may also send a seed offering to post office box 293 Kannapolis North Carolina 28082 
The word of God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Thank you in advance for supporting Word Life Center International. Bring the thing to me that makes you laugh. Y'all don't want to talk. <laughs> Bring the thing to me that gives you a, your, your most fulfillment, your most pleasure. Bring it to me. I want it. Abram, Abraham didn't say, well, God, you gave it to me. Why are you taking it? He obeyed. He went up Mount Moriah and, and, and laid Isaac on that altar and had the knife and was getting ready to kill him. And, and God, the angel said, no, look. What was that a test of? Priority? God's agenda? Abram, like, if you didn't give them to me, I wouldn't even have a son. That's right. That's right. You, you, you promised, you fulfill. So you gave them to me. If you're asking for them back, I, I freely give them to you. Man, Abram, Abraham loved God more than his own pleasure. He loved God more than his son. See, y'all won't come to church because of family. From the author of Occupy comes the new bestseller, Capacity, the ability to hold and handle what has been given. Order your copy of Apostle Jeff Sanders' newest book, Capacity, now available at Amazon.com. Capacity is available on paperback and also on Kindle. Let's stay connected. We have multiple ways for you to connect with us. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. For more information about our ministry, visit us online at wordlifecenter.org or call us at 704-298-0845. We here at WLCI would love for you to come visit us where our pastors, Jeff and Michelle Sanders, teach the uncompromised Word of God. Their mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrate the power of the Word in every arena of life. Come visit us at 1124 Rosewood Avenue in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us today in Transforming Lives. We pray that the message has blessed you and that it has pulled you closer to God and His Word. Until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind.